to know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. Some historians call it modern India's first age of fire. The description is not far off the mark. As the 20th century began, so did extreme reactions to British rule. Despite encouraging education and limited political activity, the British were not about to leave India. Instead, they continued to abuse their power. Anger spilled over in 1897 when the Chapekar brothers of Pune, Damodar and Bal Krishna, assassinated Indian civil service officer Walter Charles Rand and his escort to protest his treatment of Pune's citizens during an outbreak of plague. The brothers were hanged and were instantly hailed as martyrs. Such examples and radical thinking of leaders like Bal Gangadhar Tilak from Maharashtra and his colleagues in Bengal like Aurobindo Ghosh, who was still a few decades from his avatar as spiritual guru, began to influence numerous educated youngsters. The Anushilan Samiti in Bengal, which began under the guise of a fitness club, was established by 1902 and would shortly claim 500 branches and cells across Bengal. An offshoot, the Jugantar Party, took wing in 1906. A shift from radical thought and writing to radical action had begun. But it all needed a special trigger, and it was provided by George Nathaniel Curzon, Viceroy of India from 1899 to 1905. Curzon's attitude towards Indians and his decision to partition Bengal in 1905 had far-reaching effects. In his 1905 convocation speech at Calcutta University, Curzon repeatedly insulted Indians. I say that the highest ideal of truth is to a large extent a Western conception, Curzon declared. The Indian is most certainly a citizen of the British Empire, Curzon said, adding, I want the Indian people to play their part in this great achievement and to share the results. In July 1905, Curzon announced the partition of Bengal. Bihar and Orisha were clubbed with Western Bengal to form the Bengal province and Assam was administratively merged with Northern and Eastern Bengal to form East Bengal. The division was clearly done along communal lines. Curzon's intent was clear. He wrote to an associate that Bengal's division would undermine the Bengali's sense of superiority and destroy their dreams, and that is why they are agitating against it. Tilak, along with Bipin Chandra Pal and Lala Lajpat Rai, they came to be known as the Lal Bal Pal Troika, agitated against the move. On 16th October, the day Bengal's first partition came into effect, much of the Bengali areas of the provinces shut down. The cry of Bande Mataram rang out everywhere. The Anushilan Samiti and the Jugantar Party increased their activities. Aurobindo Ghosh, the future spiritualist, was a key member, as was his brother Barendra or Barin. Jugantar took its name and inspiration from a revolutionary journal, Bhupendranath Datta, Swami Vivekananda's brother was an editor. Jugantha's headquarters in Kolkata became a cache for weapons and a hub to manufacture explosives. And Barin Ghosh once said that he and his colleagues wanted to rouse the country from the torpor it was in with the sound of the bombs. A series of attacks and assassination attempts against British targets took place and robberies to fund revolutionary activities. In 1907, revolutionaries twice used explosives to try and wreck the train of Andrew Fraser, the Lieutenant Governor of Bengal. 
The Jugantar Party targeted D.H. Kingsford, the district judge of Muzaffarpur in Bihar, on 30th April 1908. Khudiram Bose and Prafulla Chaki lay in wait for the judge who was known for vindictiveness. The attack with handmade bombs failed and by mistake the wife and daughter of a British lawyer died. Chaki was chased and shot. Khudiram was caught and sentenced to hang. He was 18 when he died. Not long after, in 1909, engineering student Madanlal Dhingra created a sensation by shooting dead Curzon Wiley, a British Indian service officer in London. Dhingra too was hanged. But this early phase of revolution began to wind down with its disconnect with the masses, Hindus and Muslims alike, combined with the government's massive arrests and deportations of leaders like Tilak. The second phase of revolutionary activity would find a trigger with the birth of the Gadar Party in 1913 and a revival of the Jugantar Party. Mm-hmm.